So hello everybody and welcome to this SimScale live session. Um, apologies for the technical difficulty. We, I think you got a glimpse of us already, but now we're back for the real thing. Okay, so I'm here with Sam today. How are you doing, Sam? Hey, doing great, David. How about you? I'm doing good. It's hot, it's sunny in Munich. I'm in my flip-flops, <laughs> simulating with my toes out. It's all good. So fantastic. <laughs> we are here to answer some technical questions. Uh, both of us are application engineers, but mm -hmm. let's introduce ourselves first a little bit. Yeah, sure. So uh, my name is Sam. So as you know, uh, and I work with SimScale for the past uh, three years. Um, I'm originally from India and I did my master's here in Germany and then working here as an application engineer um, since I joined. And it's yeah, pretty fun working here. Absolutely. How about you? Yeah, so I'm David. I'm another one of the application engineers. I've been here for six months. And before that, I was working at another CFD company. And I just love what SimScale were up to. So I applied to come here and here I am. And now I'm working with customers on a daily basis and looking for potential customers as well. So getting to see all sorts of industries and engineering problems that uh, we can try and solve. Mm -hmm. So today we are gonna answer some questions. We've already got a couple of technical questions from the last session with Megan and Sebastian. But so those technical questions that came in, the first one is, Hey, can I use SimScale for thermal hydraulics in nuclear reactors? So this, I feel, is a is a question that's going to be based on on coolants and using using water to actually cool the the, the nuclear processes and things like this. I'm not a massive expert on nuclear reactors, but correct me neither. But um, the point is, uh, it's more or less into let's say um, a combination of thermodynamics, heat transfer, and then uh, fluid simulation. So uh, this, this is definitely a typical application, yeah, usually what we work with. Yeah. yeah. So, so what we have for this kind of simulation is conjugate heat transfer. And this is, so we're simulating both the, the heat transfer in the solids and the heat transfer into the fluids and the resulting effects on those fluids and also the the the, the forced effects on those fluids as well, if we've got an inlet and an outlet. For example, in a in a heat sink case where we've got the heat sink maybe on the exterior of a of a nuclear reactor, and then with, with water circulating through it as a coolant, we would use a conjugate heat transfer simulation for this. Correct. And yeah, obviously the interesting facts that we actually get out of these are uh, the, the temperature profile throughout, so which cannot be obviously seen through experiments. So you get a lot of more details when we end up with simulations. Mm -hmm. And I've actually got a customer doing exactly this right now. So it's definitely relevant. And the answer is yes, you can. So moving on to our second question. Mm -hmm. What we have, can we get the software used for making of airfoils using different parameters. So I think that is saying, can we use the software to analyze airfoils with different parameters? Okay. Yes. Yeah. So this, this is also one of the typical applications. So yes, usually when people do for airfoils, they wanted to analyze for the lift and drag coefficients mm -hmm. for different, usually for angle of attacks, for different angle of attacks. Uh, yeah. So this is, uh, also a typical application of external wind loading where mm -hmm. we try to find the lift and drag uh, for various configurations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're looking at the, the aerodynamic behavior of these airfoils. And um, for this, we're gonna need particular meshing strategies and also maybe um, different turbulence models as well. And we've got full range of different meshing strategies and also turbulence models for Reynolds averaging. Mm -hmm. Anything else on airfoils? Uh, there, there are tons, obviously. There are yeah. tons of things to discuss. Yeah, but obviously, to, to answer the question, definitely this is something which mm -hmm. we can do and parametric, parameterized study. This is something yeah. which we can definitely yeah. go forward. And it's it's a topic that normally requires a lot of validation and, and we've got validation test cases mm -hmm. on our website for you guys to have a look at. Cool. All right, moving on. Let's move on. Yeah. yeah. So most... CAE, Computer Aided Engineering, software supplies price-based suppliers price based on functionality module slash module you will be using. This is frustrating because it means I have to pay for a capability I may use only once or twice a year. 
does sim scale price similarly that's a very very good question mm -hmm. <laughs> because that's a common problem i think most engineers face um this point of time yeah and obviously we we do not have a feature based uh pricing module no so i think that's that's one good advantage mm -hmm. uh which engineers can you know definitely take yeah. uh, as a, as a positive side so when you sign up yeah. for for sim scale you automatically get all of the, the different CFD analyses and also the FEA analyses. And this is all going to be in the same workbench. And in one project, you can have simulations of, of multiple types. So you could have your CFD analysis, and then you could make another simulation on the same model of, of an FEA analysis. So then we're getting a sort of a real full analysis of the structure mm -hmm. from both CFD and FEA sides. One thing we have introduced is a new solver, which is based on um, the lattice Boltzmann method, so sort of yeah. particle collisions. This is quite expensive to run from our end, and this is an this is an additional add-on. So this is something you wouldn't get included straight away, but um, that's the that's the only exception. Yeah, yeah. I think apart from that, everything is just based on a, a single a single uh, mm -hmm. package. So yeah. It is it is um, a single pricing. Yeah, to answer the question in short. Exactly. So, moving on, we've got another question from yeah YouTube. Yeah, from so Simon. Simon. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm nervous about intellectual intellectual property. Do I have the ability to download results, data sets, and store them locally as a manual backup? Sam. Uh, yes, absolutely. This is possible. Oh, actually, to answer this in in multiple folds. In the, in the first place, uh, when it comes to you know um, the security, so obviously we have multiple levels mm -hmm. of encryption. Mm -hmm. um, let's say for whatever data that we provide, so um, starting from CAD and simulation conditions, a level of encryption, and also what we run on the servers are all encrypted, and then they proceed on. So obviously, mm -hmm. it, you cannot extract data quite easily. Mm -hmm. So this is a good fact. And apart from this, uh, it's also possible to definitely download the results locally onto a machine and have it for your reference at any any point of time yeah so if you if you are worried about keeping all of your stuff on on our um database you can also download it and obviously have it on your local machine just in case you're scared that you're going to mm -hmm. lose your results you won't but if you want to you can download them so moving on yeah so questions from social media do we have anything coming in from social media Okay, so I think yes, we have something coming in from Twitter, and there's Mike. Hey, Mike. Hello. Uh, Mike. Yeah. So we see a question: Is it possible to simulate thermal comfort and radiation? Well, absolutely. This yeah. is something I've just done a tutorial video on this topic. So if anyone wants to have a look at running a tutorial of thermal comfort in a in an office space, so we've done so I've done an analysis of a ventilated office space with with two strange looking people, because we didn't want to model the, the full <laughs> geometry of the people, so they're just little thumb people. And um, so we've got two thumb people and computer equipment in, in one room. It's a ventilated room. And then we're applying different heat sources, for example, on the, on the PC units and on the humans themselves. And um, then we can simulate the, the thermal comfort in that room, taking into account the effect of radiation. So the um, surface to surface radiation um, between the heat sources and onto the um, other surfaces in the model are going to be taken into account. So this is a complete thermal comfort analysis with um, with radiation included. What we do know is that thermal comfort customers who are who are simulating thermal comfort are looking for some specific result quantities. Mm -hmm. So this is something that we can do, and and we're and we're planning to bring into our new process new post processor where we're going to have um, specific thermal comfort result quantities. Cool. Yeah. And just, just to throw some light on what exactly do we do with thermal comfort? So obviously, mm -hmm. people sitting in you know, various places inside a room. So where does a person you know, feels super comfortable? Or mm -hmm. where is it you know, too odd to sit inside uh, a theater space? So this is something which we do you know, for thermal comfort, which takes into account the, the Flow velocities at various points, and also the local temperature. So that's that's the good good thing that um, simulations can provide us. Yeah, fantastic, cool. Okay, the next one we have one live question from YouTube is from Ashlyn. 
So what are the benefits of uh, multiple simulation types? Okay, well, yeah. multiple simulation types. We, we covered this a little bit at the start when we were talking about the different, um, whether we do feature-based pricing. And uh, the answer to that was no. And what we have is in the in a single project, you can have multiple different analysis types. So we can, we can, for example, look at the um, external aerodynamics of a solar panel, and then we're going to calculate the forces on on the solar panel surfaces from from the wind. And then what we could do is take those forces on the surfaces into an FEA analysis, and um, then analyze whether it's going to be um, safe if it's going to fail under under loading we can also go into some um so we can we can assess whether it's going to plastically deform if we include non-linearity in in the simulation type um but yeah can you think of any other good examples of where multiple simulations are a benefit for our customers sure so um one other common application is also um let's say in in thermal industry where you know you try to do uh, a heat transfer analysis and also try to understand the structural uh, integrity. So thermal stress is acting on mm -hmm. different parts. Mm -hmm. So uh, you kind of extract the data after we run the simulation with what you mentioned, conjugate heat transfer. So with um, solids and fluids, yeah. and I try to find just the structural integrity, whether it would withstand the thermal stresses. So mm -hmm. common applications. And also this could be extended um, even further um, as, as you mentioned, on buildings, um, also trying to find, let's say, the frequencies, the natural frequencies. Oh, yes, good uh, one. Do you know? Do you know the common one from the Ta Takanoma Bridge? So the uh, the common one where, oh, where it, it goes it, absolutely it, crazy. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So the, one one common example mm -hmm, where mm -hmm. you try to analyze for the natural frequencies and the wind um, speeds and see if this actually coincides with the resonance frequency. Yeah, definitely. So you take oh. your you take your wind loading results from from CFD. Yeah. And you find the frequency of the loading, for example, and then you would do an eigenmode or a frequency analysis, and we're going to find the natural frequencies Precisely. of the structure. Yeah. And then if if they match, if the CFD loading matches one of the eigenfrequencies, we're in trouble. It's a concern. Concern, yeah, for sure. And, yeah. and this is the kind of analysis that you need to do multiple types of simulation. And mm -hmm. SimScale gives you all the different types of simulation in one package, so mm -hmm. you're good to go. Now, do we have anything else? So we'll give it a minute and and wait and see if anything else comes in, either via I think we're YouTube, Twitter. I don't know about Facebook. Yep, I'm let's, not sure. Let's, let's wait for it. Yeah. Cool. So just just as we wait, how are things going on for you? Oh, <laughs> how was your weekend? It's been, oh, it's, been, it's been good. We've been in the sun, going around the, the parks in in um, in Munich. It doesn't get any better, really, with the with the beer gardens and yep. the and the lovely weather. Perfect. Finally, it feels like summer in Munich. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was pretty rubbish up until now, but yeah. in the last couple of days, unfortunately, we don't have air conditioning. We could we could simulate air conditioning in our office, but we we don't have it. So, hopefully, something that the management are listening to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. Cool. Uh, okay, there's there's one more which just came up. So there's. Bali on YouTube, is it possible to simulate moving objects on some scale? So typically with collisions. Okay, so this yeah. would be going into a dynamic FEA yeah. analysis. And um, this is this is absolutely some, something we can do. And we just need to set up a, um, a physical contact between the impact object and the impact surface. And then we can run after giving it a time step and um, you should be good to go. We can also include things like material damping if you want to go into um, a non-worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. So if you want to really simulate accurately the response, then we can include material damping. But uh, but yeah, so this is a this is a this is a analysis that is common amongst our customers, and um, I certainly like doing it. So I work mostly on the on the FEA side, and um, so yeah, absolutely. So does this mean I can simulate what happens if I? drop my phone from a particular height? Well, uh, clearly, exactly. It's going to break. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you, David. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's I didn't need to simulate. Promising. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Cool. Um, OK, there's one more from Eduardo, also on YouTube. Can I run transonic flow analysis around an aircraft? I know this is usually quite difficult. Uh, yes, I think he's 
partially right. Uh, partially right. Yeah. So transonic flows are quite um, not so straightforward mm-hmm. because um, yeah, the Mach number is not super straightforward to mm-hmm. work with uh, our usual fluid simulations. Mm-hmm. And we work with um, the finite volume codes. And these are quite stable until, let's say, point, uh, 0.7 or 0.8 mm-hmm. mark, mm-hmm. Um, beyond which it's it's usually not so stable. Yeah. And if, so, you're, if you're new to this topic, so transonic just means that the um, the air is actually going to be starting to become compressible. So anything above 0.3 Mach number mm-hmm. is the um, air is going to start behaving compressibly. So then we need to employ a new solver. And we can't just do incompressible CFD. But, uh, and yeah. True. So yeah, um, in general, it's it's obviously quite difficult, uh, but worth giving a shot mm-hmm. for sure. So it's it's usually uh, up to Mac 0. 0.7, 0. 0.8 is good enough. Mm-hmm. One, uh, yeah. Exactly. Anyway, it's fun. It's a good topic. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I think I yeah. think that's actually all the time we have. So I think we're going to have to wrap up and mm-hmm. say thank you very much for joining us. And if you do have any final questions, any any other questions, then you can you can leave them on whichever platform you're using, and um, whoever's doing the next session will will answer them in their session. Yeah. Also, maybe um, if if it's some interesting question, we would also try to put them on the forum so you can get your answers right to there. Um, yeah. And the next session we'll be announcing it um, soon. So, cool. Stay tuned. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Bye.